There is no doubt that chips have a huge impact on the economy, technology, military, people's livelihood and employment. So they are regarded as the vital gate of the country. The competition among the United States, South Korea, the European Union, Japan, and China is particularly fierce. The United States even uses administrative means to suppress Chinese chips and directly confront China. First of all, the United States included more than 300 companies such as Huawei, ZTE, Yangtze River Storage, and Longson in the entity list. And then cooperated with Japan, South Korea, the Netherlands and other countries to create a chip fence in an attempt to completely block China's chip road. Domestic chip companies have encountered huge resistance in terms of components, materials, manufacturing, and equipment. The most obvious manifestation is that we cannot use 5G mobile phones equipped with Kirin chips, but in fact the situation is far more than that. According to statistics, in 2022, there will be as many as 5,746 chip companies that have been cancelled or revoked in China, an increase of 68% over last year. Although most of these chip companies are small players, under the chip ban, orders decreased, performance declined. And eventually they chose to cancel or revoke, and some companies even did not even carry out chip business. However, what is encouraging is that there are still some companies that dare to face the difficulties and have achieved good results in the face of adversity. Such as SMIC, JCET, and Shanghai Microelectronics. SMIC has conquered 14 nanometers and 12 nanometers manufacturing technologies, raising the level of domestic chip manufacturing to a new level. JCET has achieved 4 nanometers packaging technology and entered the leading position in the world. Shanghai Microelectronics has mass produced 90 nanometers lithography machines. 28 nanometers lithography machines machine is also under development. These achievements in the field of manufacturing have not come easily because manufacturing is the biggest shortcoming of Chinese chips. SMIC's 12 nanometers process means it can produce more advanced chips, which could make it more competitive in the market. With the continuous development of technology, it is expected that SMIC will also break through the 7 nanometers manufacturing process in the next few years. This will allow SMIC to produce smaller, faster, and more energy-efficient chips, which will be very useful in areas such as artificial intelligence, 5G, and cloud computing. Zhang Rijing's experience in building factories has made him an expert in building the largest and best quality chip factories. He once built 10 factories while working at Texas Instruments, so he is very experienced in building factories. After returning to his motherland, he built the first chip manufacturing plant, but it was forced to close due to some reasons. He later established Shida Semiconductor in Taiwan and made it the third largest chip foundry in Taiwan. However, Shida Semiconductor was eventually acquired by TSMC for $5 billion. Zhang Rijing asked TSMC to build a chip manufacturing plant in the mainland, but this request was not fulfilled. In the end, he left TSMC and got an opportunity in Beijing to go to Shanghai. After Zhang Rijing arrived in Shanghai, SMIC received preferential land policies, coupled with the addition of talents. SMIC developed rapidly. Soon after, SMIC established a branch in Japan, and in 2004 it became the fourth largest foundry in the world and was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. However, the rapid development of SMIC has aroused the vigilance of TSMC. TSMC sued SMIC in court on the eve of SMIC's listing in Hong Kong, suing SMIC for patent infringement and stealing trade secrets. SMIC also countersued TSMC for violating the settlement agreement. In the end, in 2005, SMIC chose to settle and compensated TSMC with US$175 million. United States. This shows that when it comes to intellectual property cases, China was still inexperienced. In addition, we did not realize enough about the importance of chips at the time. Otherwise, we will definitely fight for more time for SMIC. Although autumn is not desolate in Pudong, Shanghai, the atmosphere at SMIC is chilly. Despite this, Zhong Rijing still firmly said, This is not a failure in life, don't be knocked down. SMIC must go forward bravely. SMIC after Zhang Rijing left. After Zhang Rijing's departure, 
SMIC fell into chaos, with a large number of resignations, power struggles and losses within the company. It was not until the full intervention of state-owned assets and large funds that the situation was stabilized, but at this time, SMIC had been left far behind by TSMC. In 2017, Liang Mengsong joined SMIC as CEO, and determined to make efforts in the process of manufacturing to narrow the gap with advanced technology. Liang Mengsong graduated from the University of California with a major in electronic engineering. He studied under the inventor of FinFET Hu Zhengming. He also served as an AMD engineer, TSMC senior R&D chief, and Samsung Electronics R&D deputy general manager. It can be seen from this resume that Liang Mengsong is an experienced expert in the field of chips. He holds more than 450 semiconductor patents and has published more than 350 technical papers. He once helped TSMC beat IBM on the 130 nanometers process and led Samsung Electronics to beat TSMC on the 14 nanometers process. Working in SMIC for many years, he led SMIC to successively break through the 14 nanometers and 12 nanometers manufacturing processes and conquered the 7 nanometers technology. What is the significance of the 12 nanometers process? With 12 nanometers technology, China has achieved its goal of increasing chip self-sufficiency to 70% by 2025, two years ahead of schedule. In 2016, China proposed a chip localization strategy, requiring the country to achieve localized substitution in the entire industry chain of chip design, manufacturing, and packaging. In 2020, China has put forward another grand plan to achieve a 70% chip self-sufficiency rate by 2025, which means that the upstream of materials, equipment, EDA tools, etc. The midstream of design, manufacturing, packaging and testing, automotive electronics, consumer electronics, etc. The downstream of application fields such as communication, artificial intelligence, and military industry must achieve full localization. This is an extremely challenging goal, but with the strong support of the state, scientific and technological personnel are working hard day and night to ensure that China's chip manufacturing industry can make a breakthrough. The importance of chips is not only reflected in the economy, employment and technology, but also in important fields such as national defense, information and property security. With the full support of the state, China's domestic chips are making great progress. One of the most notable advances has been a breakthrough in chip manufacturing. Chip manufacturing is one of the fields with the highest technological content. And it is also one of China's biggest shortcomings. A typical example is that there is a six-year gap between SMIC's 12 nanometers process and TSMC's 3 nanometers process, and the gap between Shanghai Microelectronics 90 nanometers lithography machine and ASML's EUV lithography machine is even greater. 12 nanometers chips can meet all the needs of military chips. Because aerospace military chips need to have high and low temperature resistance, impact resistance, radiation resistance, anti-interference and other characteristics. Instead of pursuing advanced manufacturing processes, most of them are above 90 nanometers. This is because many weapons and equipment are in harsh environments. Such as space, underground bunkers, Gobi Mountains, etc where they face extreme conditions such as high temperature, low temperature, cosmic rays, humidity, and salinity. Advanced process chips are too complex and prone to problems. In harsh environments, chips with mature technology are more suitable for the needs of national defense and military industry due to the lower probability of problems, coupled with special design and manufacturing technology. 12 nanometers chips can fully meet industrial needs. Industrial grade chips usually use a 14 nanometers process, but 7 nanometers or 5 nanometers chips can be used in some individual cases. These chips need to meet a wide range of operating temperature requirements, usually between 40 degrees Celsius and 85 degrees Celsius, and have functions such as multi level lightning protection, dual transformers, short circuit protection, thermal protection, and ultra high voltage protection. During the manufacturing process, Measures such as moisture proof, waterproof, mildew proof, and anti corrosion are also required. At present, most of China's industrial control chips adopt mature technology, such as 40 nanometers and 55 nanometers. 12 nanometers chips can fully meet the needs of general household use. 
For home appliances, many chips are also used in common home appliances such as refrigerators, air conditioners, TVs, and washing machines, but they usually use mature processes, such as 90 nanometers process. Due to the large space of home appliances, the components do not need to be crowded together like mobile phones. In addition, Home appliances are usually used for fixed purposes and are directly connected to 220 volts power frequency AC. So there is no need to consider the problem of high power consumption. Therefore, chips with mature technology can fully meet the needs of home appliances and can also reduce costs. In general, 12 nanometers chips can meet most scenarios such as military industry, industry, home appliances, Wi-Fi, Internet of Things, power grid, video surveillance, etc. These scenarios account for more than 80% of the total chip demand. From the perspective of manufacturing technology, domestic chips have achieved the goal of 70% self-sufficiency two years in advance. Chip manufacturing is inseparable from lithography machines. And currently domestic lithography machines only support the 90 nanometers process. Therefore, Conquering the 28 nanometers lithography machine is China's current top priority. In order to realize the entire industry chain of 12 nanometers domestic chips. After stabilizing the 12 nanometers process, consider advanced processes such as 7 nanometers and 5 nanometers.